Kia ora koutou, no mai haere mai, na puna wai oto tahi, hello. Complex here in beautiful Christchurch, New Zealand. My name is Kelsey Bielik, and I will be your eyes and ears on the ground in this match between Hive and Cog. So we're looking at Hive right now in white on the right side of your screen. Hands up, indicating that they are ready to go on offense. Cog launching the disc downfield, and they are in navy dark, um, hailing from Christchurch. Hive, of course, from Auckland. Um, excited to see this match. Excited to see um, an athletic matchup between both teams. Um, both, as they put it, um, groups of friends, friends groups, hives, um, because they're 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 social and, and friendly, like like a hive of bees, training together, um, putting in the effort throughout over the course of the season, um, and really hoping to bring it together in this tournament. Meanwhile, Cog standing for Credo Open Green, um, a diverse group of players from across France, Argentina, Mexico, the United. United States of America and here Aotearoa New Zealand of course coming together based in Christchurch um, and really bringing together a diverse range not only of um, cultural backgrounds um, but also talent to the team focusing on development in their own way as well so we're seeing right off the bat um, great movement from Hive um, they are they've been a team since 2018 so definitely experience um, getting to know each other as players nice clean throws and catches hammer over the top to an easy catch, putting one point on the board for Hive. Um, I'm joined now uh, by my good friend Toby Sutherland. Hello. Who, um, will be co-commentating with me today. Toby, what are you looking for in this game today? Uh, I'm interested to see what Cog is bringing. Uh, Hive, uh, I've played against a few times and we've seen a fair amount and they're a pretty good team. Uh, a lot of energy, a lot of fast handle movements. Uh, a lot of like OI throws, like OI forehands and things, quite creative usage. Uh, and Cog is, uh, Cog is a little bit untested with a lot of like different faces that have kind of been around in the scene that have uh, played socially occasionally and that, that kind of thing. And, and also some new faces that uh, aren't as familiar. So I'm, I'm excited to see what they bring today. Cool. Um, unfortunately, looks like a bit of a cramp on the side. Note that we are getting into the day. Um, this is the, the first day for the Division II New Zealand Ultimate Championships here, 2023. Um, so a bit of cramping. Um, I think the player will be okay, the Hive player on the sideline. Great teammates helping out with the stretching. Hive, as they score the last point, launching the disc and running down on defense. Cog with their O-line on the field. Nice handler movement, good swinging, massive fakes um, getting started. Finding the open option, cutting across the middle and launching deep right away, trying to find Ferrarini, if I'm not mistaken, Ferrarini deep, um, but it's a bit too far. Now conditions today, it, you can see it, it's overcast. Um, beautiful conditions for ultimate, really. We've had a light breeze. We'll see that one more time, launch deep. Ferrarini can't quite get under it. You know, in Ultimate Frisbee, we talk about hucking to different thirds of the field. Toby, what does that mean? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a common one. Those same third hucks is, is said a lot. Essentially, uh, it's really hard to catch a disc that's flying directly from behind you over your head. So they like to kind of organize it into lanes down the field. Hopefully, we'll see some examples here. Oh, I hasn't, didn't decide to put it up in the end. Just going to reset nicely. Uh, but yeah, generally, you want to throw uh, parallel to someone, not over someone. Which was a challenge there, I think, with Ferrarini. Oh, Um in that deep space, challenging to catch it over his head. We've got a contested foul here. Uh, what are your expectations for this game, Carlos? You, you're looking for any uh, any things from any particular teams or? Oh, so so I, so I mentioned a bit of that in the beginning. We've got another deep look coming deep. Cog player chasing it down, catching it in the end zone, and he is stoked to be catching that disc. Adam Stedman putting the first point for Cog on the board. Um, as I mentioned, excited for athletic talent from both teams. Hive again seeing the um, connections and that they've been working on. Um, as beekeeper Dylan Lai puts, um, a player on Hive, he's a beekeeper himself. Um, he mentioned that Hive was put together as a bee team of sorts uh. in the Auckland region. Of course, alluding to the fact that in their mind, they're not the A team, um, but also a group of bees also <laughs> working busily together, staying focused. Um, yep, and bringing everything to this game, awesome. this tournament. That's very cool. Do you have any standout players you're keeping an eye on? I've got uh, I've got my own uh, 
Keith Elgar actually. He's uh, he's an athletic player. He's been playing a while, and uh, his game's really shaped up well recently. Uh, We're seeing keeping it on him for Keith sure. Olgar with the disc right now, and he has represented Aotearoa New Zealand at the world stage, I think on the U23s team, back when it was U23s. Mm. Um, so international experience as well. Not afraid to throw his body on the line, and also a range of throws in the back pocket. Yeah, absolutely. He's also been playing with a real confidence lately that makes me excited to see what he's up to. Uh, the other... Mark on the swing handler here doing a good job. Sam Powell, he's also someone to watch. Tong and Penfold running the handler space. Nice movement so far by Hive. Beautiful up the line. Is this going to seal the deal? Oh, intercept by Powell. A little Let's unfortunate. See one more time. Not today. Um, great throw, good vision by Padhe. But couldn't convert. Keith Olgar with a cheeky high release forehands. Yeah, absolutely. That's that kind of confidence I was talking about. Palk through the middle. Nice kind of reset in the middle now. Dixon. Oh, just a little wide. We've got Lothian with a disc launching it deep. Trying to find that receiver. Disc is fading. Great read by Olgar. Oh, looks like there may have been a call retracted. And that's definitely something you can do. Of course, uh, frisbee is a non-contact sport, but definitely something you can do. Um, it's it's non-contact, self-refereed, and if you think something may have happened, you can make a call and, of course, just retract it once you've had a moment to consider what happened. Yeah, absolutely. Tim oh, Burton. cross your shot. And we're hearing from the sideline the you've got time call, also known as the chili call. Algar taking that space, securing the disc with his body. Um, trying to remind his team that you have a full 10 seconds with the disc, 10 seconds of stalling time. You have time to make a smart decision, find the right person, and yeah. the team has really taken it to heart on the field, converting that into another point for COG. Yeah, excellent. The score two to one. Excellent little find there in the middle. Uh, I believe that was Pauk to Lois. And it's just nice, nice to see them work it in, not, uh, not rushing things. One thing I've appreciated from definitely that point, as well as the last few, and you mentioned this, Toby, was the cross-field throws. Mm. And what we're seeing is not necessarily massive swings around the field, but we've seen quite a few cheeky kind of to the open side, massively to the open side, or all the way across the field, mm. these diagonal sweeping throws. Um, and I, I'm getting stoked on that, I oh, guess. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm hoping to see more of that throughout the game. Um, means that there's a lot of vision, a lot of creativity in what the handlers or the, the throwers are looking for. Yeah, absolutely. And also just sometimes it's an indicator of freedom and that the uh, the team's not going to jump down your throat for throwing it, uh, trying it out. Because, you know, throws like that really can open up some major opportunities and uh, you shouldn't be afraid to throw them sometimes because it, it really it, it can get you a point just so easily. Big forehand pull. That's uncommon. We we'll have uh, Lothian receiving though. Lothian and Chong working together in that handler space. Does look like a junk defense coming out from Cog. Just trying to kind of make it a little bit murky as to who's free and what the options are. Some good movement here, though. Hade kind of keeping that movement going, but they're going to reset, swing around behind. Chong with the disc swinging to Salt, back to the middle to Chong. Nice chilly handler movement here from Hive, indicating also really good defensive pressure downfield from Credo. Absolutely. Oh, nice find though, the forehand flick through. Chong as those safe hands in the backspace, swinging to Salt as well. Hammer over the top. Ooh. What a find with a sliding catch, adding style points to that already stylish hammer in the air. It has been styly frisbee at this tournament so far, and I'm excited to see it continue. The, the hammer did flex a little bit back, not quite the way he wanted, I'm sure, but the receiver made it look good regardless. I love to see high fives on the field, but let's see that replay one more time. Salt looking for her receiver, finding them in that deep space, and he's sliding to bring it down. We'll say that he was uh, flexing that away from the defender. <laughs> what a point. Adding one more to the scoreboard to Hive, making the score two all. Yeah, a lot of work on that point was uh, 
Bin Chong being that kind of reliable handler. And uh, funnily enough, uh, Bin Chong actually played with the uh, the like Dogma B team, uh, Dogmatics, a few years back, um, which is essentially a similar iteration of what this team is. Um, and yeah, it made a guest appearance one year. And that was quite cool. He's a very versatile uh, handler. Very agile. Um, it looks like catching that disc, this, this does often happen with hammers. Um, and catching that disc may have tacoed it, tacoed indicating that um, the disc may be um, uh, ruined in some way, may be bent out of shape. Here we see the pull coming up. Big outside rip. Bending over all in and now being collected. Keith Elgar. Nice forehand into the middle, Ano Katia. Oh, a little give go coming out down. Oh, <laughs> a small fumble and had to be recollected. Safe though. Oh, nice lead, but unfortunately just flicked a little too far and it's going to be defended by the Hive looking defensive player. For one of those classic, as I just mentioned, really cool here to see Cog looking diagonally for those cross field looks really opening up. Yeah. And he's playing with that lower release back at Big left pivot. Right. Got to see that reset. Oh, nice angle cut there. Lying, swinging, safe swing pass, a break pass to the middle of the field. Love the energy. Hyvis has really picked this up, launching it deep. Just. We've got Lang oh, chasing it down. He really put on the jets there. Yeah, no, it, it made a lot of ground. Unfortunately, it just drifted away. If it had had just a little roll on it, it would have made for a gorgeous put. Um, and again, there's, there's a slight breeze, um, and that may have impacted the throw as well as it was higher up in the air. Um, I love the, that, that burst of intensity that Hive just brought out, though. Um, you know, really looking for those options. We could feel it from the sideline. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we get a lot of the volume when they get hyped and going. There's just a lull at the moment that taps in, but it'll be going again soon. And Hive in their sideline play, clearing to the middle of the field. We've got one option deep. Oh, sorry, that's Cog, obviously, on offense. Algar with a safe reset in the middle. Yeah, just evaluating his options here. There's a lot of movement on the field. They just need to let things kind of clear up a little as to what they're shooting for. Nice progress down that break side, though, and they'll have a lot of room to swing all the way back. Cartier, nice hop <laughs> Yeah, looking for that dishy. He didn't get it. <laughs> oh, what a find! Whitehead, wow! Consistently, we're seeing Cog here. They're, they're waiting for the options. This is such an interesting play style mm. to see, though. Um, Launching it over a lot of the congestion. Yes. And finding the open players in different parts of the field. Yeah, and, and absolutely capitalizing on just like slightly looser defense, you know. Like people often don't expect throws to that part, and so they don't mark it as tightly. And you see him walking, he puts a hand up, just a sneaky hand, off it goes. A great vision, good footwork. Staying in bounds, towing the line there. Yeah, really. Whitehead nice. waiting for option after option. When Cartier goes, that fake, I honestly thought he had it. My eyes followed that pass. And Whitehead finding, threading the needle, finding that deep look to a clean point. One yeah. more for, for Cog on the board. 3 2. So a small lead for Cog, but not too much to speak of. It's a lot of game left yet. Smiles on the sideline. Adam Stibben with the pull. Disc goes up. Hive immediately making up that ground. Of course, as soon as you pull the disc, um, it's really important to get down there on defense. Otherwise, you're just giving up those yards that you've worked and trained so hard to pull as far as possible. Very active. Lots of pressure downfield, lots of movement. Yep, as Toby's saying, from Hive, lots of cuts happening. But pressure on every one of them. Yeah, Cog's doing well to stick with their players. There's a lot of just work happening in the downfield right now, which is great to see. Players still fighting. Salt with the disc. And he is looking to the middle of the field there. Continuation pass. Oh, beautiful. Oh, and opening up. He has time. Will he snake it down? Cannot. So there may have been some contact on the throw there. We'll see. Yeah, that is such a nice sequence of play that it's a little unfortunate it had to end in such a way. Samuel Aguilar with the D there. 
helping the Hive player up. And good to see, regardless, good to see that, that sportsmanship of, you know, helping up the other player. Um, and Aguilar climbs up to get a hold of it. Looks like it's a foul, no contest. Yeah, so uh, Ben Chong here is going to have the disc on the line. See if we can pop something in. Looking for that open side option. Engaging the reset. Lothian with the disc. And Lothian, such an experienced player at this point. He's played multiple world championships. Such a good reset. Swinging to the receiver. Yeah, that's really nice. The open side swing is what you want to see. Trong, was it? Yep, we've got Trong in the end zone with the point. And what a good point it was. Um, so one more point. We've got Hive and Cog neck and neck. North Island versus South. Finding themselves battling it out here at the Napuna Wai Sports Complex. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice to see some hotly contested uh, disc, even if it is... Um, a little bit of a mister on that one. It's it's good to see both teams really charging to get it. It means they're both hungry and want to be out there fighting. And we see there Lothian finding the swing again. And I think that was Salt as he found the player in the end zone strong, towing it in, falling over a little bit, but committed to keeping that catch inbounds. We've been seeing a lot of match defense, um, which is consistent with the conditions. Um, makes for definitely an exciting game, um, fast moving. Oh, it's a nice pull. It's got a little lift to it. Give them time to get down. Comfortably fielded by Algar. Off to Cartier. Oh, what? A good backhand. I affectionately call those the dad backhands. Forces flick, but he snuck it through. Cartier sneaks it out, and there's pressure on every one of these catches. Cog getting a hand on them, really running through. Yeah, Whitehead's been doing a really good job in the middle as well. Like... Not exactly running the offense, but definitely being a key component of it. Frequently getting free on these unders. Like, there's another example. Oh, just, just snuck away from him there. And that's such a, a, a fun throw to put up, that inside-out forehand. However, they're difficult to nail down. They have to be perfect. There's such small error on those inside-out swings. Massive hook goes up. Low, oh. looking deep. Just through the hands there, unfortunately. Low wanted that deep look to happen, launching that backhand. I believe it was uh, Leo Polico just just th threw the hands in between. Yeah, unfortunate. A lot of a lot of pressure on that grab, so it's understandable. Now behind us, this is the Division Two Ultimate Championships here. Behind us, we have a hotly contested game between Hammertron, hailing from Hamilton, and Ellipsis from Australia. Um, there are. The game's happening on both channels, both Division One and Division Two. We can see the score there. Um, back to this game, though. What we came here for, a huge deep look, defended. And what a great catch by Polico. Yeah, he, he, he must have wanted it back bad after missing that catch, and uh, he gets the D, which must be rewarding. Sing with the disc. Finding low, coming around. They're really utilizing this backhand space. Credo with, uh, sorry, Cog with a strong mark with the points. Dylan Lai, the beekeeper himself. Yeah, that's uh, it's just really nice throws. Like, they're so flat and so well timed to really, like, meet the player where they want to. And we see Blueberries players here as well giving high fives to their Auckland teammates, cheering them on. Emma Menzies, Crystal Tan who've been battling it out on the Blueberries, the women's team, top women's clubs team. Oh, a nice bid by the Cog player as well. Unfortunately, didn't quite get there. And then we just see the step out in this beautiful flat back end. So flat, makes it so easy for the receiver to just receive it in the bread basket there. Two-handed catch, very safe. Can't ask for more than the rear basket. Can't ask for more than that. Takes us to 4-3, so Hive's clawed back the one point. It just seems to be neck and neck trading. Hive coming out on defense right now. Big hop coming from Singh. VJ Singh launching it downfield. And Cog Handlers 
my friends, that is what we like to see out of a defensive play. That's what we like to say. I was just saying with a strong pull, if the team is not getting down there, you're giving the other team the yards. What a defensive turn. Absolutely. It's not just a jog. Oh, oh and a slide. He couldn't quite hold on to that. That's Reggie Lee, and I, I think that would have been... immediately turning up the energy, called quick to, to come back. Oh, my God. Hitting the disc, disc to himself. <laughs> Bounced off his own leg. Deadman waiting, taking the chili reset option. What did we just <laughs> see, my friend Toby? And Aguilar with the assist as well. That is amazing. What a sequence of events. I, I mean. So this is, we're seeing, you know, Hive rushing down on defense, and that is a strong defensive line. We have that mammoth pull, and then the rest of the team streaking down the field. You know, they've trained this. This is not a jog. This is a flat-out sprint. You know, who on the team is the fastest? Getting down there, disrupting the disc. There's yeah. no, it's an offensive point for COG, but they don't have any offensive opportunity when they can't get a pass off, you know? Yeah, no. They couldn't rein in that energy, which led to the turnover, and then it seems COG just stood up and matched exactly what had been thrown at them. Yeah. Pog, you know, calling that into question here. You've never seen thigh-eye coordination? <laughs> Hive really picking up that energy. Oh, great grab. Diving grab, yeah. Johannes Block? Eugene Lowe. <laughs> sorry, sorry, that was Sam Penfold with that, with that um, sliding catch. Good movement on Hive. Finding that open player in the end zone, a leaping grab and a, a, a great self call from Salt um, to connect with the pop pass. So Salt then seeing he he jumped in and uh, info with the score, moving back, saying he you know he caught it on the line. Let's see that one more time. <laughs> Does look like he caught it on the line, running it back out to find Penfold one more time. He had that sliding grab, feeling that energy, closing the point for Hive. Yeah, it was nice by Salt to get back so quickly as well. Like he knew straight away, he got back and it allowed him to throw the opportunity because it, it, the, the receiver was there and ready, you know. And the nice high five um, there as well from Derny Cog, you know, celebrating. We can see the dog over there as well. We've had quite a few friends um, across the footpath on the far side of the field today. Um, and that good pup, that good boy, good girl, is also <laughs> stoked about some ultimate ball in his mouth. Um, maybe hasn't quite learned about flitches. Here comes Hive. They're looking for a, uh, a break here to put themselves up to. Hog, though, they're looking pretty good on offense. Eugene low with the pull. Again, the team racing down there. This is something I like to see. That energy, that tenacity on defense. Yeah, Whitehead doesn't look intimidated, though. He's taking his time. Ah, just drifted. A little miscommunication on where the cut was going to go there. Richie Lee with the D. Oh. Dylan Lai with the throw. Making the connection back to Richie Lee. Yeah, that's such a nice throw as well. Just that pivot out and just fire it straight into them. And he's got his hands up there. He's saying book ends. If you see his hands on top of his head, he knows, and he's stoked about that. He's bringing so much energy to this team, energy to this game. I'm really enjoying that. And Lothian as well, teammate, hands on the head. So let's see that one more time. Caught cleanly in the end zone, hands up. Bookends, of course, in Ultimate Frisbee indicates when you make the defensive play, you generate the turnover and then you score the points. It's a, it's a commentary on, you know, on success, really. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm excited to see this run down. I, as you say, they've just been charging. The, the energy is so high at the moment, it's, it's really cool to see. There's a few things at the end of the day, um, I know I've been saying this in a few games, that win a game of ultimate, obviously, clean throws and catches. Um, and who's going to do that at best, especially in windy conditions? It's calmed down a bit, and here, this energy is really what's carrying the game. The past few points for Hive. Pull goes out of bounds, it will be bricked by Cog. Um, but I'm talking about this energy that, that's carried them through the last few points um, and really turning up the temperature there. Um, 
I'm not sure if the, the bees will start bearding on the outside of the hive for any other beekeepers out there to try to cool it down. It seems like hive is really vibing off of this energy and this heat though. Whitehead with a disc looking for options. Huge layouts from Dylan Lai. Open a bit of bumping in the downfield. They're calling a stoppage. Uh, it was uh, a little bit of a tuck on that disc as it was caught actually. So they might be checking the equipment there I believe. It does look tacoed. We can see the way it wobbles as it flies there. Um, it's not pretty. Second one in the game, actually. This is a record for us thus far. We've, we've had one taco disc in a game, but this is leading to two, and we are still in the first half. Whitehead with the disc again. Uh, I mean, if that's not a statement to the intensity they're playing with, nothing is. Low juking to make the... Oh, they're calling stall as well, so he clearly was like last second to be able to do anything there. Lowe was juking, so that number 17, uh, oh, I'm very sorry, that was Lucas Tay um, in that handler space for Cog, juking around and trying to make that look. One thing that's important to recognize, though, his defender was face marking him, and that can be quite challenging. Face marking, really shutting down, fully focused on the hips and where your defender's going. However, you're sacrificing awareness of the disc. Now, one thing that Whitehead could have potentially done was initiate a throw. Mm. And if the defender has their back, they have no idea where the disc might be coming. We have a deep hook coming down, two players deep. Oh, huge. Jumping up. What a sky. That's <laughs> such a nice grab. That's textbook, jumping straight up, two hands, safe as houses. Now, as I was saying with the reset, though, when you're face marked, it's up to the handler. They can initiate an option, put a disc out there, giving the def giving the offense space to run onto it if the defense has no idea where yeah, the disc is absolutely. going. Oh, here we see that throw again. Just beautiful. Oh, and that's the way it's done. Body under the disc, all the positioning. And Elgar was there. He was he was hungry for that defensive play, but at the same time, you know, not not wanting to draw contact, not initiating a foul. So props, you know, to the offensive space there and defense for not obstructing that and keeping it clean. All right, 7-4 to Hive. Cog has a uh, bit of a way to climb themselves back now. Again, I think it's um, a bit of that energy that we've seen players like Richie Lee really bring into the game. Um, players that, that the energy that Hive has been bringing that's, um, that's carried them these last few points. There were initially a few trades and now, now they're really, really starting to pull away. Cog looking to match that intensity, maybe with some of those beautiful cross field diagonal over the top passes that we've seen. That's an example of one as a swing taken down. Oh. And a quick point. That's probably by Hive. Half. Yep. To to take half. Wow. Just like that, it can all go wrong. Yeah, Sam Powell trying to do something a little bit visionary. He uh, he saw that opportunity for the backhand break and took it. Uh, unfortunately, the defender was closer than he must have realized. And let's see that one more time. So that high release. And the deep and Christchurch Cog. Until then, I'm Kelsey Bielik. And I'm Toby Sutherland. We'll see you in five. Right now. He's gonna have to bid. Oh, just a oh, just a football. <laughs> Huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end zone. Maybe well. just that boost of energy they needed.
here who was cut from the COG team. No doubt a great receiver in the end zone, but didn't have the depth. No throws. It looks like they're ready. Can you tell us? Kia ora koutou. welcome back to this game we're watching between Hive Ultimate from Auckland. On the left, we're seeing number 15 with the pull, hailing from Auckland again there in white against Cog from Christchurch in the Navy, currently on offense. Walking through the second half with you, my name is Kelsey Bielik. And I'm Toby Sutherland. We're your eyes and ears on the ground with this game. Oh, contested there a little bit, but I think Tay's got it. So it's been an exciting match. Um, the game started with kind of trading point for point until um, a massive defensive play by, I believe it was Richie Lee, um, and, and just the energy turned up a little bit from Hive to allow them to pull ahead. We see the score now eight to four with Hive in the lead. Nice. Cog showing some great disc movement, great passing, and, and a lot of creativity with what they've been doing as well. Um, so the second half, it's still anyone's game. Yeah, absolutely. And we're seeing some some just like nice use of getting it to where you want. Like if the option's not perfect, doesn't matter. They they're throwing it and they're trusting the players to collect it, which is which is good to see because you just have to keep the disc moving sometimes. Oh. Love the push pass there. I have to comment from Ferrarini before. A cheeky wee creative throw thrown in. Back to Tay, just commanding things in the middle for now. See a really active mark. Nice for him. Inside out. Out. What a point coming out after that break, that halftime break, and showing teams how it's done. Yeah, that really had to happen. I mean, 8-5, eight, eight like, well, 8-4 before that, it would have been a, a long way back if you didn't start scoring some points. And uh, Taish just with a beautiful shot. Aguilar with the disc centering it to Tay. And here it is setting up. Inside, laser to the break side. Timed perfectly. And Cartier with the points. Cog must be riding that high. I know I'm riding that high. Seeing throws like that, points like that put out on the field. Carrying them defensively into the second half. There's actually a, a check. Um, looks like Whitehead checking the disc with Hive to see if the disc is all good. We've had two taco discs thus far this game, so I was surprised to see the check with the third, but good to see that the third disc is still in good condition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I assume that was um, them just wanting to make sure that they'd approved the new disc that they were playing with, just in case. Maybe. You never know what shows up on the sideline of some of these tournaments. The dog disc. <laughs> Who knows? Cog setting up on defense, discussing their strategy, and launching the disc downfield to Hive waiting with their offensive line. Lothian seeing the disc down as it soars past him into the end zone. 
So we'll take it from here. Just looking for opportunities. There's a lot of miss downfield. Just wait for it to clear up. Looks like Lothian's going to be the reset here. We can hear calls from the field echoing home. So again, sideline just as important as the players on the field and, and, and supporting, providing advice, guidance, vision to the players on the field. Um, forces home, that is, for Cog. Forcing backhand. The huck goes to the break side. Such a difficult throw to defend against. Launched downfield and converted into a point. Yeah, there's, it's such an unusual flow of events, that one. And it's just worked out beautifully for Hive to take them to 9-5. And that hawk that faded a little bit, but at the same time, it's such a difficult throw to defend. A throw that's coming downfield and just snaking to the break side. As a yeah. defender, when you're set up on the open side, it's, it's really difficult to regain position. And such good reading there um, to bring it down. Yeah, it was a it was a really nice effort um, for the defensive like for the receiver to first collect the one that was like swirling back. Johannes block with the catch there. We see one more time, and throwing the disc. It might be in his name, and that's where it's staying because that disc was not blocked when he released it. Plenty of free space. Good release. And to the point. This goes up from Hive to Cog, responding on offense. And this is uh, another time we've seen this, the wind pushing the disc a little farther than the handlers expect it to be. Nice movement right away. Whitehead faking to Algar, looking to Cartier. And pushing it around to Algar, good vision, finding that option. Yeah, Whitehead definitely having a lot of ideas of what could happen and players not quite being on the same page and ready for it. Oh, I love that hammer. Once again, Whitehead surveying the field, kind of eyeballing what needs to be done. Lasers oh. come through. Laser backhand. Okay, great layout, D. You know, it looks like that disc was going to the ground. Nonetheless, it's, it's great to be safe on defense. Yeah, absolutely. To see it all the way through, because you never know, you know, who might be sneaking in from behind as well. Okay, yeah, laser backhand. Yeah, that probably did come out a little lower than he was hoping. That also was pretty low, but... Um, we're seeing... Oh, the man who got the block called. before, Richie Lai, is back. Yep, he's back. On attack. Or at Lee, rather. And you're seeing arms up. Cartier there with his arms up, indicating that a pick was called. It looks like he's, he's flexing and he might just be again. These players have been doing a lot of training. He's probably showing off his guns, but really his intention there is communicating um, that a pick has been called on the field. To people on the field, as well as the sideline, as well as us as the commentators. So we can let you guys know what's happening. The hunt goes up. Players sneaking deep. Will it fade back in? Algar safely running it down just to ensure there's no greatest, no attempts, pl attempted plays on that disc. Yeah, Land with with a, a beautiful huck there, couldn't keep it in bounds. Yeah, no, it, it came from such a nice break shot as well. Just uh, a shame that it kind of drifted away there because the whole sequence would have been beautiful if it come off. Uh, but because it didn't really come back in field, it's actually coming all the way back down uh, with position for Cog basically just starting uh, in the opposition half. So you can see now Algar getting up. Um, the screen was previously just where the, the mark was waiting, where the disc had previously gone out of bounds. Inside out pass, what beauty, Whitehead with the disc, looking for a point, looking for that open option. Hammer comes up. Oh, the defense goes up too early. And you know, sometimes that's a really intelligent play to make. Um, more challenging with the receiver, I think, I think that was Cartier with the catch? No. No? Who? Uh -huh. How'd you tell? Oh, it must be Rob. Must be Rob Silverbauer. Silverbauer, yeah, with that beautiful catch. So oftentimes, so his his experience there, we can really see that on display because as the hammer goes up, 
We can see defense really trying to make an attempt to cause the offense to jump early. Sometimes if you're out of position, you know you're not going to get it. That early jump will it'll be a warning. You know, you, you can bring other people to jump with you. And once you're in the air, you know, you've already burned that energy, burned those seconds. Um, Silverbauer not taking the bait and waiting to see it down into his hands. Yeah, that was a, it's an exciting moment when a hammer comes dropping into two people waiting for it, absolutely. Uh, but Cog will be absolutely relieved to have that go their way. It's 9-6, and they needed that, so this is their opportunity for a break. Steadman with the pull. Coming down, down to Chong, commanding the field, passing to Salt, assessing his options. There's deep looks, there's under looks. Nice movement here. Yeah, it's a very active downfield as well, which is just gonna generate a lot of opportunities. It's really on the uh, handlers to leave space and like wait for those opportunities. Block now trying to find an option. Justin Field there, pinfold and shoots across. Safe. That's that crossfield shot we've been talking about, and that's just fantastic. And that, that was a break forehand, too. Yeah, beautiful by Penfold to get, a, get it across there. Yeah, Penfold really assessing his options, but, but with that, the force to the sideline, the backhand force, he needed to step around his player, as well as put the power behind that disc to launch that slightly upwind downfield, cross the field. Um, but what a great option yeah. as a receiver. Fantastic. I, I think it was strong again in the end. One of our earlier scorers from the game. So, Hive with the disc. It does seem like there is a little bit of wind. Uh, this could be a little bit of upwind, downwind we're seeing. But uh, teams are actually scoring into the wind. Oh, one more time. Breakthrough. Power behind it dropping in perfectly. Oftentimes when you're throwing forehands, especially with angles on them, the bladey forehands, especially outside ins like that one, um, you really need to pin it down if they drop too soon, too late. They're, they're coming straight down into the ground. There's not a lot of float. And he timed that really well, aiming it directly at the receiver. You see the receiver didn't even have to move, just crouching down yeah. to bring it into his hands. Yeah, no, that's always a good sign that you've nailed it. Speaking of angles and blades, that, that disc coming down, I think they were looking for a roller. Huge fake by Olga. White head to collect. And they're looking to work it in the middle. Nice dishes. Oh, great movements. Looking to reset with Tay now. Sneaks that through. Back to Algar and they'll look to continue. Algar finding Whitehead. Oh, Tay wants that hook. Oh, it's just a little miscom on what was happening there. And unfortunately, Cog have lost possession. There's now an uh, opportunity for Hive to break. Pelican sees it down with a D there, slaps the disc down. Oh, inside out backhand. Love that throw. Great continuation pass. Oh. It's Young can't pull it through. Yeah, just an unfortunate tip there. Chen with the continuation. Algar picking up. Looking for inside options. We're hearing no break on the sideline. Breaks, of course, difficult to stop when you have both the inside and the around. Algar finding the open side with Whitehead as a receiver in the end zone. That's the second um, point, you know, that's scored like that um, yeah. with both teams kind of echoing each other. Yeah, it does seem to be the way where uh, that both teams are finding defenders snoozing a little bit on the far side of the field. Maybe not expecting these crossfield shots, but they're coming out regardless. Here we see again Algar eyeballing it. He must have eyes on the receiver he wants. And that's the sideline again. He looked for the inside out forehands there. Yeah. Um, the, the voices from the sideline saying no break, so he opted for the open side. Oh, that's one of my favorite looks. Yeah, that's a really nice shot. And he, he just was waiting. He was waiting for that one step from the uh, receiver to indicate that they were going that way, and then no hesitation. Bang. And putting some height along with that shot as well um, made it arc over the stack, over the dangerous um, defenders, mm. you know, standing in the middle there, over the congestion and around to where it needed to be. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want any interference or rogue fingers dabbling with your shot. We've got a timeout called. Hive is is clapping their hands. They're buzzing with the energy. Um, and we're seeing the, 
injury over there. It looks like a cramp. We've had quite a few cramps today. Hydration is key, my friends. Don't forget, that's rule number one. Life rule number one. Um, applies, of course, to Ultimate Frisbee anywhere you are in the world. Um, we've seen, yep, again, a few players cramping, so um, teammates... <laughs> Uh, helping stretch out there. Water containers across all the fields. We're lucky to be here at Napuna Wai Sport Complex here in Ototahi Christchurch in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Napuna Wai, a wonderful facility. We're streaming two games, both Division One and Division Two, at the same time. Um, uh, we can see the Port Hills in the background, as well as um, the diversity of sports that that are on display here at Napuna Wai. On um, the Hive, cheering that they're finishing up, taking to the line taking to the sideline. Meanwhile, Credo, what do you think Credo, oh, sorry, um, Cog, what do you think, Toby, what do you think Cog is discussing? I think Cog is probably just discussing just just the usual affirmatives, just reaffirming, like, the basics, you know, like, yeah, we've got this, like, just keep doing your thing, we're finding gaps, keep working hard on defense, just all the usual kind of affirmatives. They are definitely in this game, like, they've definitely had enough opportunities. It's just uh, just slightly more clinical from Hive, you know? Clinical, and I think, again, that energy. Um, I'm still buzzing off of um, Richie Lee's um, defensive plays. Um, diving even when, to, to put the disc down, even when there's not really an offensive option, but just to be safe there. Um, and I think the rest of the team is buzzing off of that, too. Yeah, no, I, I, for sure. It, there's nothing that gets you hyped quite like someone chasing down a pull and then getting an intercept. We see Algar getting ready again with the pull. Uh, laughter and smiles on the sideline as the cramp eases and there is the hydration I was talking about. On the field, Credo set up for defense. Sorry, Cog. Wearing Credo kits, though, um, interestingly, as part of the wider Credo club. Apologies for the confusion with the name. Adam Lothian taking the uh, pull. Salt now. Good chase down from uh, Cog as well. Just snuck through the gap there to the middle. Looks like Block is going to play it. And Ferrarini quite, quite loose defense on the side there, trying to um, take away options on the break side. Um, not the case as Hive has swung to the high side of the field. Opposite really using the width. Penfold swings back to the middle. Yeah. Oh, that's an unusual catch, but lucky for Salt. Keeps the disc alive. Looking for an opportunity. Has he Fires found one? it! What a put! Really, the touch on that disc was what made it successful. Yeah, no, that just rolled around fantastically. The defender's going to be a little bit unhappy with that. Whenever you get a good sniff of it but can't quite get there, it's always a little bit frustrating. But That's, that's the throw, yeah. honestly. That, that's an impressive throw. That's the handler putting it, dropping it down right where it needs to be. Now this is streamed by our colleagues at Ulti TV. If you like what you see, if you want to continue to support um, live streams, ultimate um, support games like this one, um, do head on over to their Patreon. That's patreon.com slash ulti.tv and throw some pocket change their way. A little more if you're feeling generous um, to support the wonderful work that they're doing, the hard mahi, the hard work behind the scenes. Once again, a bid the disc landing perfectly down where it needs to be to score the points. Yeah, absolutely. We've got uh, <coughs> VJ Singh with the disc now, the distinctive pink cap. <laughs> and then, uh, oh, here he comes. Singh launching it downfield. Uh oh that angle didn't look quite right as it came out. We see hands already indicating a brick. And there's the grin. <laughs> it lands just over the top of us. Singh, um, being respectful of the space, at least, so it doesn't land on the heads of the commentators. Disc bricked by Cog. Sam Powick picking up. Accompanied by Cartier and Hall as handlers. a lot of activity on the field, but they're having a little bit of trouble finding the space. It's, uh, it's hard for the throwers to identify like the clear space that they can throw into. So there's a lot of like intercepting throws having to be made. It's a little bit trickier on the throwers, but they're, they're taking their time to find these nice resets when they need to. Definitely. I really like the way that Cog is attacking the disc now as well. We see Cartier as well as their, um, 
Elliot running through. I mean, he didn't get the under there, but they're just attacking the disc, keeping it alive as Whitehead has done there, um, and running through the options, making it much more difficult to make a defensive play when, of course, the offense is just attacking. <laughs> what? Elliot collects it right in front of the end zone. Beautiful. Punches it in. What was what was that insane throw that we saw there? Yeah, Whitey clearly had a vision that no one else had and just flew it straight around and it just landed in Elliot's lap. It was a good one. It might belong in the Modern Museum of Arts. It looked like some modern art there, um, but it was visionary. Let's catch that one more time. We get the nice slide through the middle. And it's so difficult when you're throwing at that angle to get that type of power on the disc. So that's why we saw, I mean, it, it wasn't quite as bullety, as lasery as other throws that we've seen. Um, it kind of came down. We'll see that one more time. He's stepping around He's so much. He's barely looking. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was looking away as he released it. Landing it exactly where it needed to be. And big ups to Whitehead for still managing it to get that power behind the disc. Because again, when you're so turned around, it's difficult to get those hips, that core engaged, um, to put the power behind the disc. Clearly not an issue for Whitehead. Yeah, absolutely lands it. It's so good. We see everyone getting ready on the line. Some distinctive features. Got some green gloves and orange sleeves and everything. Algar with the disc, ready for the pull. Unleashes that bomb downfield. What a beautiful pull it is. And immediately making up those yards. Penfold with a, with a great slash cut across the field. Still, still open, bit of a saggy defense. Chong finding it in the middle from Lothian. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of work through these same players. Salt has been getting a lot of distance, just doing great work in the center of the field. That one's just Oh, Algar! That's Toby, huge. you predicted that. That massive, just threw the net up in the air. Yeah, no, it's it's those surprisingly athletic plays that definitely give Keith, a, or Keith Algar, that is, a uh, high value for a spectator. He got up there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Strong with the disc again. A little reset here to Lothian. Just kind of clear the downfield and let them kind of figure out what the plan is from here. Oh, he's looking for options. He wants it slightly deeper. You see Lothian directing the downfield. Oh. A penfold with the disc once again on the sideline. And they found Salt in the end zone. I love that. Um, That's a little a celebration. Yeah, eh? celebration. I wouldn't call it a spike. It was definitely respectful. Just, just tossing it into the air and hitting it down. How good. That's a really nice one. I like that. Swatting at the buzzy bee. Yeah. Salt's been doing such a good job in the middle. Like frequently, not every second, but maybe every like third pass or so. Let me see Chong again with the disc. A little bit just that handler movement and kind of, the kind of, there's Salt again as we were saying, just a lot of this good movement. He's been so good, wow. Oh, and that block is okay. spectacular. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, just throwing the net out, you know, with that wingspan and with those hops, it's difficult to snake through there. We're seeing Hive as they score the point, Penfold. Finding salt, snaking the disc right through the middle. Yeah, that's one of the downsides uh, from overbidding a little bit. We saw Algar making a play at that disc, and uh, just here we see she almost gets a hand to it, but as a result, there's no mark on the throw. So Penfold gets this free backhand infield to salt. That's right. a really good point, Toby. Overcommitting on defense and really trying to generate that turnover um, can sometimes be bad as well. Wow, look at this energy with Hive running down. They're hungry for that defensive play right away. Cog's matching it, though. Sim Cog Cog. matching it, absolutely. I mean, a lot of energy into these cuts to get free here. Finds a cheeky little pop to Whitehead in the middle, and Whitehead's going to shoot. Oh, these deep options. Oh, hey. Deep Dixon with the catch. You know, I heard before the game, teammates were joking. You're going to be saying his, he's, he's going to be doing good things on the field. You're definitely going to be saying his name. Um, I was checking in with the phonetics, and Dixon it is. Um, definitely making the play, chasing that down. We'll take one more look. That massive forehand. Yeah, that's a great, that's just a great shot. And yeah, Dixon in the deep. 
Um, interesting, again, we're seeing a diversity in the way teams are, are, are scoring points right now. Um, a lot of deep looks. A lot of deep looks, yeah, yeah, converting into points from both teams. Um, now, what might you do defensively, Toby, to try to adapt and change that or prevent the other team from scoring that way? Well, it's, it's hard to come up with a strategic approach because a lot of what's happening is just so much activity in the downfield that a lot of these like opportunities that are opening up in the deep are just from the chaos, that it's just emerging from that opportunity. It seems handlers are definitely not shy to make that look. We had a, a clip to another player, another person racing downfield on their electric skateboard. Back to the game, though. <laughs> Following the Hawk racing downfield, disc in the hands of Lothian. We see Penfold on the side here, hand up, trying to stay quiet, but calling for the pass. Bit of a question there. Is uh, that up? Yeah, question for the viewers. Is this up or down? Did he catch it up or down? <coughs> Luthien swinging and again Salt finding that middle pass. What do you guys think? Of course, this sits with the players on the field. It's up to them to determine. Looks like it's going to be staying there. No strong opinions, Last and so they're just giving the benefit of the doubt. Lothian bombing big. He has a target in mind. Pinfold's there waiting. Can Stedman get back? Oh, huge bid by Stedman. Oh. Oh, and there's contact called. Yeah, I got a little bit messy there. It was a great first bid by Stedman, but wasn't able to get it the first time, and so I had to go for a retry, and it got a little bit messy with the hands. It's always a tricky discussion involved whether you hit the disc or whether you hit the hand, and how much contact there was. Nonetheless, an impressive bomb by Lothian, pulling out the arsenal. Looks like it's foul, no contest. Yeah, I think you have to shoot that. When you see a player that unmarked that deep, you, you just have to do it to make the defense respect it. We'll see uh, Pinfold here on the line. Props to Stedman for chasing it down, though, and getting there. Back to Lothian, pop pass! Easy and that peasy. is a point for Hive. I believe that was Pelican sliding in on the knees. All right, so that takes us to 13-9. There's um, not too many points left in this game. Cog have got to make a move now if they're going to try and get back in this one. Ankle breaking cuts there. Even breaking his own ankles as he's going to the open side, manages to get past both defenders to score a point. Penfold walking back with the disc. Yeah, nice. A lot of movement there. Just quick little pop, pop. He actually fell over just prior and yeah, yeah. turned out he got up just in time to receive a pass for a goal. Yeah, as I mentioned, a a breaking his own ankles <laughs> even with, yeah. with the agility and sharpness of those cuts. VJ Singh with the disc once again, ready for the pull on defense for Hive, and launches it forward. This time nicely in bounds, floating down, giving plenty of time for defenders. It's good chase. We oh, see they're Richie they're Lee again. They're so fast. Powick's trying to find a solution here, but there's not a lot of open players. And Kevin Young also matching that energy there. These are no. handler defenders <laughs> that you know, I would not want to go up against Olgar with an inside out backhand and it is floating. Hive under it, Cobb under it, and Hive pick it up. This is such a high paced game. Back and forth down the field. Injury called. Oh, that's unfortunate. Looks like White here had a little bit of trouble and he was such a key player for the offense for Cog. Great to see him walking off the field, indicating it's um, hopefully not too severe. Um, maybe a cramp, like um, Most the, of the Hive team. <laughs> There's no hesitation, is there? As soon as that turn happens, it's right back on. It is. The energy coming back out. Looking nice for marking. Dump. Yeah. Lang ends up launching it deep. Actually, a great option to the open player. Wow. Was he inbounds? Elgar gives him a high five, indicating that was a point. And... What a throw that was. So Lang 
again, he was looking for options. He was really chilly with the disc. I think he did a fantastic job trying to engage dumps there. He is saying, I'm <laughs> sorry. After he's just assisted that incredible point. Um, I think the stall was getting high, which is likely why he launched it deep, but ended up being such a great decision. Yeah, so often in these high stall situations, these turn into a thing of, <laughs> well, ugliness. Unfortunately... I don't think that was ugly. <laughs> no, that's what I was going to say. Most of the time they do, but this one turned out to be beauty. Beauty as if it was planned. Yeah, unfortunately for Cog, that high stall just, just got absolutely blitzed by a gorgeous throw. Lang, my friends, I don't think you have anything to be sorry for there. Um, an impressive point. Love the high five at the end as well. Yang, of course, catching it in the end zone and keeping it in bounds. Well, this is uh, this is match point now for Cog. They've got a they've got to score a lot in a row to bring this one back. Here comes the pull. Coming out on offense, and right now, something if, if I were Cog, I would be considering maybe a pull play, a quick way to um, score a point right away, do what you need to do. And we're seeing beautiful flow right off the bat um, coming off. Yeah, the silver bar in the middle there, just swinging to Aguilar. Aguilar looking for Cartier, finding the middle. Elliot as, as a glue player in the middle consistently. Cartier pointing to where he wants nice vision. his offense to be. Oh. Looking deep for the hawk. Stedman, but can't get through the hive. No, <laughs> no, that was a solid defense there. Got up for it and slapped it down. Hands sticky like honey. Ding the disc down to the ground, giving Lee a chance. Oh, sorry, that, um, that's Lai a chance. Um, again, our resident beekeeper, a chance to, to pick up on offense. Oh, great initiated cut. The disc wasn't quite in yet, though. Great undercut. Oh, oh. a bit too high. <laughs> he can't reel it in. Right on the line. Can they convert it? Little push. A little push through the cut yet. <laughs> That's cheeky. We've seen a lot of good little pushes so far. We have, and again, I love the diversity of these points. We were seeing a lot of long deep hooks before, and right when you're on the end zone, we're seeing, yep, cheeky little pushes, um, cheeky passes, converting into points. There's, of course, a wider way of yeah. ways to score points in Ultimate Frisbee. There we see oh, it. Oh, we see it again. Beautiful little break push. All right, so uh, it looks like Cog has called a timeout. See if they can uh, conjure something up for their defensive point to come come flying out with a strong break. We're seeing a few more fans on the sidelines. Um, players, it looks like, from Misfits. Before there was Blueberries, um, one of the, the top women's teams. Misfits, another one of the top women's teams um, in Division One. Um, two sister teams in Auckland supporting one of their brothers te brother teams. Sorry, Hive out here. Um, players sitting on, on the back as well behind the field. Looks like Dogma players um, in the Division One Christchurch Opens team. Um, so love to see the fans out here supporting the game. Love to see. Um, thank you. The hydration as well. <laughs> yeah. The crown thing. Um, yeah. Uh, and one reason, though, I was going to mention Hive might be calling um, this timeout now is that they have a, a comfortable lead, I would say. But if there's one more point they need to win the game, it kind of in your mind in, in a long tournament, you're thinking, why do we need to waste our legs when we can close it out right now? Mm. And that's probably what they're looking at doing. They're coming out on offense. They're going to, you know, disc goes out of bounds. So this is their opportunity to save legs. Why play more points if they don't need to and try to close it out? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a, a clinical finish here is really what you're after, just to make everyone feel good about it. If you um, if you kind of stumble a little bit right at the end there and concede a few points, it doesn't feel nearly as good as just putting it away now. Uh, Chong in the middle, we've got a, such a strong O-line on, like Salt, Lothian, and we've got such good movement. Salt with the disc to the middle, Chong. Speaking of block, a lot of block cutting in the middle. There's a slide between handler mark and um, reset mark there. Here's block, busting up the line, resetting to the middle to Salt. Oh, a great pop pass. Such a nice reset. Just Salt really good use of angles. Breaking down the far side of that field. Hive, ooh, with that contested point just on the line. 
Doesn't waste any time talking about it. He's just back to the line. He wants to score this in. Sensibly resets to the middle, though, not Lock. forcing it. Yep, back to the middle. Oh, and there's an injury. Oh, <laughs> more cramp. <laughs> you know what? Um, we need a salt shaker on field two. <laughs> we, do. we need some more. <laughs> um, interestingly, Hive slowing things down a little bit. One thing they've really brought out, um, I guess, especially on defense, and it could be their defensive line, but is energy and quick movements. At this point, they've slowed things down a little bit. They may have discussed that, um, making some more mm. kind of intentional passes, intentional plays, trying to conserve the disc, conserve mm. greatness, as we like to say. Yeah, um, yeah. And maybe that's intentional. Either way, one thing is clear. They're trying to score the point. We're seeing Dogma players sitting there on the hill supporting their team back to the game. Yeah, I think you might be on something with uh, saving your legs and just keeping it clinical to finish. So here we are tapping in. There was a lot of discussion. They're just trying to make sure this gets tapped in right because it's an important part. So when one team um, gets a substitution because of an injury, the other team has that opportunity to do so as well. Hive with the disc. Penfold looking for options, finding Chong. Chong now just looking for that killing blow. Seal what the game. Great shoulder fake. Stall count getting high. Finds the swing. Oh, Chong, little step back open side. Doesn't quite collect it though. The throw goes low. Things were getting a bit congested up there on the side. They did center it, but. But yeah, maybe could have centered and reassessed. Mm. Nonetheless, finding those options and couldn't convert, giving Cog another chance. Oh, just through the fingers there. That's that's very really unfortunate. Right, so try try two for Hive to put this one in. Lothian with the disc, finding Penfold. Oh, great pickup. Great pickup. Yeah, Fenfold firing into the end zone there with an ankle biter of a shot. <laughs> yeah.